Hi, everyone. This is Mike with episode 67 of Getting Everyone Moving, brought to you by Palms to Pines Parasports. Today, I'm interviewing a, uh, another Californian. Yay! Meg hey. Paul up in uh, Northern California. Hi, Meg. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. So let's start off, um, Angle or um, talk about your dad. Uh, he had quite the uh, experience of life, that's for sure. Yes. Um, so my dad was a mechanical engineer most of his life by, by um, experience. He didn't go to school. He was just very naturally gifted. Um, and from an early age, he was known for um, cr creating innovative solutions to problems. So he worked in the paper mill industry for many years, for example. He developed a, a roll straightening technology that the industry used for, for many decades after that. And uh, just throughout his life, he developed a, a tree stand that he patented. He developed locks that used to be used in the back of UPS trucks. So he has a very creative mind. Um, and he's also an outdoors person and has been very active. Uh, but in his later years, uh, he, so he passed away about a year and a half ago at age 89. Um, but in, I would say the last 30 years of his life, he had one after the other um, health issues, uh, but that didn't keep him down. Uh, so he would still be out, you know, shoveling his lawn. I mean, just to give you a sense, he had severe asthma his whole life. He had diabetes. He had had multiple heart attacks. He lost his leg in his last few years of life. He's had a vascular problem his whole life. So he had his veins stripped throughout his entire body. So, I mean, this guy, it's like the Energizer Bunny. Take a, take a look at me and keep on ticking. So anyway, um, I would say in his 70s, even though he had done fishing and boating and swimming all his life, he started kayaking and he liked um, fishing from his kayak. But with all these health complications, he would get very winded. And so um, as he often would do, he decided he could create a way to make the paddling more energy efficient so that he could enjoy the fishing. And so he came up with this um, device that he called the angle or right from the get-go. And um, it, it mounted to the the, the kayak and um, the idea was that you're not holding the weight of the paddle so right off the bat you're kind of eliminating the you know the energy you expend to actually hold the kayak paddle um, and then to make it more energy efficient um, he angled the paddles downward so that um, it's it's really just like a rotary motion with like riding a bike with your hands if you will and um, as you can imagine, now you're not having to lift your shoulders, you're not having to turn your torso as much and all of these things. So he um, developed that and um, I'm one of um, eight children. <laughs> and uh, I would say, oh, I don't remember the year, but maybe around 2009, um, we were all at one of the family members house at the lake and everyone was taking a, a uh, you know, a swing um, using his device. And I just really loved it. Um, and and um, I'm sort of been in nonprofits for the first part of my career, and then in marketing for the last 20 or so years. And I just felt like it was a product that um, had legs that um, there would be a use for it. And so he and I partnered and um, decided we would try and make a go of this device. Huh. And um, I mean, where is it sold? Is it all over the world, in the U.S.? Um, I mean, it, it's available if, if to be shipped all over the world. It's primarily we're in the U.S. and Canada. Um, we're primarily an e-commerce site. We do have some distributors, and, um, you know, that's always an area we're trying to grow because we want people to be able to try it out um, or at least look at it uh, before they make a purchase. But, um, you know, as a new business, that just takes time. Uh, so we're primarily in the U.S., but I get inquiries all over the world, um, quite a few from the U.K., a lot from Australia, a lot from Canada. And then um, I don't want to say obscure countries, but um, smaller countries. So uh, just ship some off to Greece. Um, I have another gal from um, Finland who's a requested an order. So, um, you know, there's just pockets and it's, sometimes it's individuals and sometimes it's an adaptive program or, a, or you know, a para rowing club or something like that. What, what kind of feedback have you gotten? I mean, this sounds like something that really uh, provides a lot of access to people who kayak. 
Yes, um, you know, I can answer that question um, in a variety of different ways. So I'll say from the people who used it, I and mean, one of the things I'm most proud of, and frankly, <laughs> as I'm saying it right now, I feel it's literally bringing a tear to my eye, um, is from the individual users, tremendous feedback. I mean, uh, knock on wood, I think there's been one one gal who said, you know, it just doesn't fit my kayak. And I tried, tried to let her know in advance it probably wasn't going to be a good fit, but she really wanted to try. So, but other than that, one 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 customer, everyone has been very positive. And um, you know, I, we've learned some things along the way. Obviously, like there's some small design changes we need to make. Uh, you know, there's one little piece that tends to break from time to time, not, you know, inordinately. Um, but, you know, the feedback is um, freedom. Uh, I'm out of my wheelchair and I feel independent. I feel like a regular person for lack of a better word. Like no one knows that I'm disabled when I'm out on my kayak and I'm paddling and, and the sense of um, peace that gives people, that's, you know, that's one of it. Um, excuse me. So. That from the consumer side, that has been tremendous. And um, like I said, there's always a lot of changes and improvements we can make. And uh, if I had uh, unlimited you know, uh, budget, I would make those right away, but it's all iterative. I would say um, uh, a different sort of category of, of feedback, and this is, this is more sort of self-directed knowledge more so than feedback that, um, you know, as we were going through prototyping and testing, and uh, we had to try to find mounts that would fit a wide variety of kayaks. And um, as you, if you think about kayaks, you know, some are wider, some are narrow, some have cup holders, some have a combing that's a, you know, a really rounded combing, and some is flat. And um, so it was really challenging to find mounts that would work for all kayaks. And, and what we say on our website is our, our mounts for um, sit inside kayaks fit most sit insides, but not all of them. Uh, and then when you get to sit on top, it's even narrower because those have some more specific parameters that you need to fit. So um, as I say, it's not feedback so much as to say, um, you know, we don't, they don't fit everything and we, we really designed something that we thought would be stable and, and work well for, you know, a good majority of kayaks. Um, and in fact, um, I've been working for the last uh, couple of months on getting a, a, another version out. Um, it's not quite ready for prime time yet, but that one will be coming too. Yeah, just, just incredible. So it sounds like your dad had a really um, good heart, uh, quite a humanitarian. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, I don't want to say no, no, he was a terrible person, not at all. Um, yeah. uh, you, you know, he designed this for himself uh, and then, you know, we didn't know. We, we, you know, had data about the potential user base and who might use it, but, um, for the most part, he was a, I'll say a silent partner. He helped on the designs, of course. Um, and I mentioned that to say that when it, so we lived in two different states. He lived, he lived in Indiana and wasn't particularly tech savvy. So it's not like he'd hop on his laptop and look at the website and things like that. Yeah. So um, when I would visit him or I'd send him something in the mail, an article or, uh, you know, a testimonial, again, you're, you're going to get me to cry. Uh, he, he, that's where it's like, wow, this thing that I created really is making life-changing differences for that person. And so, yes, of course he cared. And of course that meant a lot to him. Um, and, and he's a kind and friendly person too. So, so, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's good that it, that's good though that these stories kind of touch you or I mean obviously you've lived them so mm -hmm. uh, so talk about yourself then um, you said you're involved in the nonprofit world in the first part of your career um, I mean what what's your feeling how do you feel about uh, you know what you're doing and how you're changing you're helping to you know create more access and, and freedom as you said yes. Yes. Well, uh, so right out of college, I got a job at our local United Way in Madison, Wisconsin, and I 
I'm so blessed to have had some really fantastic mentors in that um, organization. So I worked there for 15 years and I started as, a, as an assistant. Um, it, they used to call it a secretary. I started as an assistant and over the course of the 15 years, I, I left as the interim VP of, of campaign and marketing and campaign. That was a short stint, but my main um, uh, trajectory there was in the fund distribution and then later the marketing. Um, and so it was really in that fund distribution, I would um, uh, sort of bring together groups of volunteers and they would evaluate funding proposals from various nonprofits. And so I had two or three um, uh, specialty areas and one of them was access for people with disabilities and disability related services, but a lot of it was about access. And so that's where sorry, I got my first introduction into, um, you know, what it's like to be disabled, frankly. And um, that really from very young age, you know, early 20s gave me, uh, a, a, I feel like, um, a good, better insight than the average person yeah. about uh, how important being able to do things on your own and not to be looked at in a certain way was. Uh, and um, I, I, I think, it wasn't until later years that I really got even a deeper understanding of, um, you know, I hate, you hate to work, you use limitations, but when you're in a, in a wheelchair, for, for an example, um, you know, some activities you, you do have limitation or yeah. limited access to. So um, it, it really wasn't until, uh, you know, we started this, this um, Versa Paddle and um, I started hearing from people who sang, well, I'm going to give you a good a case study. I'll come up. I'll come back to that. Um, I don't want to say case study. It's a it's a it's a customer story. Yeah. Um, case study sounds so clinical. But anyway, uh, so for me, that I worked in the nonprofits for 15 years, and then I made a transition to my alma mater, and I worked in um, uh, tech in uh, at the U University of Wisconsin Madison. Uh, and then my husband and I got our census together, and we decided we needed to be somewhere warm. <laughs> We had young kids. Uh, and so here I, I continued to work mostly for the private sector in marketing and technology. Um, but I continued my, my volunteerism. I was a volunteer coach for soccer for many years because I'm also a soccer player, although it's it's getting more and more limited as this the age. <laughs> um, and then I um uh, they happen to be good friends of, of ours, but um, I served as the uh, inaugural board president for a local um, ballet, youth ballet company. And so helped get that nonprofit going from the, you know, just from the ground up. So that's sort of my grounding in, in nonprofit. But um, I, can, I can tell you about uh, this young man I'm thinking of, unless yeah, you wanted to. Please. Please. Okay, so th this is, speaks to um, you know the value of, of of having an activity where you're you're not in your wheelchair, for example. Yeah. And so, um, co coincidentally, so, so I get calls and emails um, pretty regularly saying, you know, we 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 think we want to do this, but we want to make sure we have the right equipment. And um, if it's a if it's a I like to say if it's um, an issue where the customer or potential customer has uh, just some mobility or strength issues in their upper extremities only, um, then I feel qualified to recommend a product. Um, yeah. You know, it's a ro rotator cuff injury, or maybe they uh, are a congenital amputee and they only have use of one arm. So there, you know, I feel like I can guide them in the right direction. When it's more sophisticated, when someone's got um, problems with their spine, uh, quadriplegic, um, I have several um, colleagues that I draw upon for these consultations. And ideally, we'd be doing this in person. And, and it's not even an issue of COVID. It's an issue of this person happens to live in Missouri, and you know, my 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 consulting team lives in you know wherever. So um, we we've come up with a pretty good system so far that we can do. Uh, these video consultations um, like this over Zoom. And often it's, you know, it's a customer. It might be a parent in this case. Uh, this is a younger man. Uh, and, you know, we kind of get an assessment of what is their sort of, you know, diagnosis from a, you know, medical standpoint and, you know, what sort of mobility do they have? And, and we'll, uh, our consultants, consultants, their personal uh, 
not personal trainers, um, PT, um, physical therapists, uh, and or adaptive paddling specialists. And those really are two different skill sets, which yeah. I'd love to talk about later because I think that's it's important. Anyway, and so, um, you know, they might look, ask for a range of motion and, and things like that. So I get these calls um, from time to time where someone really wants that in-depth um, you know, analysis, and we're not providing any, you know, medical advice, we're not providing official, you know, this is what you need to do, but we're saying based on our experiences, this is what we think will work for you. So this um, young man, and I think he's fine with, I'm writing a blog about this, so I'm going to use his name, I, I think he'll be fine with that. Uh, his name is Raymond, he's 22, and his mother, Roseanne, uh, reached out to me um, probably six months ago, and kind of we went through this whole scenario over several months and one of the issues with adaptive kayaking if you need quite a bit of adaptive equipment is a very expensive proposition yeah. um in fact it sort of prompted me to uh on our website i added this um new adaptive kayaking equipment calculator so you can see the range of things you might need and what is their price range from do it yourself with, with duct tape to you know buy the most expensive piece of whatever is available in that category so with him he needed everything he needed a kayak, uh, outriggers for stability, our paddle, um, a seat. Uh, he needed some padding um, to protect his legs and his skin. Um, uh, a cart to be able to transport him from the land into the water. So that was going, it ran um, upwards of $5,000. And mm -hmm. so many people don't have that kind of money lying around. So he and his uh, mother, wrote grants and one of the places that's been very tremendous just from my personal experience is the Kelly Brush Foundation. Yeah. Um, and it, it seems like, again, this is sort of my nonprofit fundraiser hat on, you know, they're, they're thorough. They, they wanted him to test this out. And so uh, he, part of the story is he lives here in the Bay Area about an hour from here. And so I met he and his mother at another um, local um, nonprofit that is getting into adaptive kayaking. They do, they have extensive adaptive bicycling program. It's called yeah. Warp uh, Bay Area Outreach yeah. Recreation Program. So I met the family there and they met with um, the adaptive kayaking person there, whose name is Leo. And he tried out, you know, we took video and he said, yeah, you know, this feels good. I feel this is something I could do. And then based on that, he provided a, a package to the Kelly Brush Foundation for his grant request. And they provided a very generous grant and it didn't cover everything, but then his mother is very industrious. And so they were able to get um, additional support from their community, from, they were heavily involved in 4-H. And so he's got it all now. So um, because he lives in the area, uh, now it took a while for all that to get approved. Yeah. And then he had to, there was a weight on the kayaks because the whole industry was behind because of COVID. So long story short, um, about a month ago, he, he got everything. And so I offered to come over and help him set it all up, which isn't sort of what I normally do. But again, he lived in the area and it was a good, it was a good experience. So we attached everything. We spent the whole day. His mom had all the tools and my father and sister were there to help and we got them all set up and the goal was that day that we were going to go kayaking together I, I brought my kayak and his mom has one as well uh, but it took so long to get that all done that we we did the follow-up two weeks later and so um we were out on the water uh and uh his, his mom was there I was there and we were probably paddling for a good hour maybe a little more than that. And it happened to be a windier day. We, we were shooting for a calm day, but it was a little windy, beautiful area. By the way, Foster City, um, if you look at it on the map, it's, it's, in, it's in like what I would call the su southern part of true San Francisco. Yeah. And it's like the series of canals. It's really beautiful. So he has all these canals that are literally outside his front door. Um, so, uh, Stop me if I'm going on too much because I haven't even yeah, tell the tell the rest, please. Okay, all right. Um, before I get to the the ultimate point I was making about freedom, um, uh, one of the things I really admire and like about Raymond is um, he 
uh, I, I might not get his specific degree correct, but he's studying engineering and design. And so he is a mechanical engineer in his own right. And um, he showed me some of his drawings. He uses CAD, um, you know, it's a design. Okay. Uh, so anyway, he had, um, in, in the time between the first meeting and the second meeting, he had uh, come up with this special cart that he uh, attached to the back of his, um, I'm going to say electric wheelchair, powered wheelchair, uh, that he then attached to the kayak, which was on a cart, and he motored himself all the way from his house and had to go down a block or two to get to the access point. <laughs> and he was like this whole long caravan of, you know, him and then the cart and then the kayak, and it was super fun. Um, and when I write this blog, I've, I've got some video from that day. It was really fun. Anyway, so we finally get out on the water and, um, you know, he's testing out the equipment and he's got a lot on there now. He's got the outriggers and he's got, he had ordered special hand grips, uh, although he has a, a little bit of a grip. Um, it was one of the things was to, pro to protect his existing functioning, yeah. it was recommended to use these grips. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you know, the hand grip banged in a little bit on the, you know, the side of the kayak where, you know, the angle came down on a versa path. So there were a few little things like that, but that's, you know, that's why you go out and you figure it out. And so for the next time, he knows some adjustments he can make to correct all that. But we were going up and down and he was off on his own and we were all together and we were laughing and it was a beautiful day. And, and I was probably about 50 yards away. And I, I heard his mom said, say, Raymond, what do you think? How's it going? Because she said, this was his first time kayaking since his, since his accident, which was about 14 months prior. This was his first time. He had done kayaking before. In fact, he taught some kayaking safety to his 4-H um, youth in his group. So he, you know, he was familiar with kayaking and, and how to be safe too. And, and so he said, you know, he just kind of made a, a sort of a kid response like, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. No, she, and then I heard her say, no, how does it really feel? And he said, I feel free. And he's a, he's a, just a kind of a subtle guy who, you know, he's, he's, you know, not full of vim and vigor. He's just likable, but just calm and reserved is the word I'm looking for. And just hear him saying very seriously, I just feel free. Um, it was, you know, that was what it was about. And his, his mom subsequently emailed me and said, you'll never know, you know, how incredible and what a difference this has made for his life. He can now go out, he can hang out with his friends, you know, they'll still have to help him get in and out of the kayak and sure. things like that, but he doesn't have to rely on his mom for all this. And he can be out, out of his wheelchair and independent. So. Yeah, that, that is such a great story. I mean, that that is what it's about. Again, you're providing, you know, someone who's had an accident, maybe, you know, very active uh, mm -hmm. or and now they can continue to do. Yeah, just terrific. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I ask many of the people who I speak with are is, um, you know, how do we create a more inclusive society? And by what you described, it's, it seems that, um, you know, you are in creating that inclusion. I mean, family members who maybe are able-bodied want to go kayaking, um, you know, with Raymond or someone else. Can, yes. you, can, you, can you speak a little bit to that? What, what's your kind of opinion about how do we create uh, more inclusion in, in society? You know, that's interesting because I have a, um, a couple of different perspective, perspectives on it. Um, just to give you one, one more very short, much shorter anecdote about, <laughs> you, know, you said something about family and inclusion. Um, I have another customer and she, um, excuse me, <coughs> she has been using our product for a good five or six years through um, a program in upstate Vermont. It's a really robust adaptive program. And so she, wa she was one who, um, hadn't ever kayaked before and has her, her, and again, it was a car accident, had been 16 years prior. So, so she's been living with a, with quadriplegia, 
you know, a long time. Um, anyway, and so she started slowly and I'll, and I'll spare you sort of the long story of, of that trajectory. But again, one of her first comments was, and I asked her for feedback and we, we wrote a blog about it. And she said it was freedom from my wheelchair mm -hmm. and the ability to commune with nature. She just really loved mm -hmm. as, as those of us who kayak do, you know, looking in the water and seeing <laughs> what's going on beneath you. But anyway, the point of the story is, um, this past year, the adaptive program was officially um, not open, but um, they were able to uh, work with some existing clients. And this gal's family, she really wanted them to come out kayaking with her. Mm -hmm. They weren't kayakers. And um, either her parents, I've never seen her mother, but I'd say based, just based on his pictures, uh, Michael, the father's probably, you know, 60, maybe, maybe 65. Anyway, so um, there was some reticence. This was, I've got pictures of this. So there were five or six of them, maybe a cousin or a brother. I'm not quite sure, but um, one or two of them um, didn't really want to go because um, one was a little bit afraid of water. And so um, the program manager said, well, you know what, we've got outriggers for you. Mm -hmm. And that will give you a lot of security and peace of mind. And then, then there was one other person who wasn't so much the water, but just, oh, I've never kayaked before. And I'm a little nervous. And what if I tip over? She said, we got outriggers for you. <laughs> and like, oh, like oh, uh, Oprah, outriggers for you and for you. <laughs> anyway, so the whole family, five of them went out. And and um, the, the customer whose name is Jamie, I, uh, and I call her customer, I consider a lot of these people friends now because we've yeah. heard so many times over the years. But anyway, she said it was, you know, something on her bucket list to have her whole family go out with her. And so they were able to do it. So even, even the notion of what is adaptive, you, you could suggest that those other able-bodied family members were participating in adaptive kayaking for, yeah. for different reasons. So. Anyway, but how, how do I feel we can make a more inclusive uh, environment? Um, I guess my, my, my main response to that is, is my thought as an individual, not even so much as an adaptive manufacturer, and I will touch on that, but um, I, 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 you know, maybe this is obvious to, to everyone. So I'm, I'm speaking from a, just a very personal and perhaps in some cases ignorant standpoint, but I'm, I'm speaking from the heart. And that is, you know, if I were in a wheelchair, I know I would still feel I'm still Meg. I'm still me. Yeah. I, you know, yes, I look like in a wheelchair. And so there's this thought that, uh, you know, I think we all notice differences and whether that's race or wheelchair or whatever, we notice differences that doesn't make us, you know, ageist or racist or whatnot, but we notice it. And so it's, you know, when you see a person, for example, in a wheelchair, you notice, okay, that's a wheelchair and probably cognitively, you, you know, you think subconsciously, okay, the same. And so it, it creates automatically this sense of um, um, difference or distance or, uh, you know, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I guess so, so as it speaks to access, it's just like, the first thing is just to remind everyone, we're just people, we're all people. And you know yeah. what? Uh, so it, it, being mindful of um, a fun activity, uh, you, you know, isn't any different for, for someone who might be in a wheelchair or, you know, be an amputee or whatever. So um, that there are ways to in, in, engage people and involve people um, with a little bit of creativity. So again, that, that, that might sound like very sort of, um, not sophisticated answer, but that's one thing from a personal yeah. level that I feel. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, you know, with adaptive kayaking in particular, I guess I have I have a variety of thoughts, as you can yeah, imagine. Go ahead. One is um, with kayaking, there is a safety element, and so it's not necessarily as I mean, and I, you know, I, there's safety and risk in, in many activities. In biking, you know, you could say yep. there are as well. But if you if you think of the levels of risk, I would suggest that an activity like kayaking has more risk than some other adaptive sports activities, perhaps. Um, and so you don't want just anyone um, saying, "Hey, we're gonna you know throw some outriggers on here." And uh, so, for example, someone who doesn't know 
might think, well, you know, my, um, I, I don't have, tr I don't have trunk control. So I'm going to put the strap around myself and attach it to my back of the seat so that I don't, you know, I don't move. Well, that's very unsafe. If you capsize, you're now strapped to your kayak. So, so, uh, so I, I mentioned that just because it's not to say, um, you know, access isn't important, but there are some special considerations and you need to be knowledgeable as you're getting into adaptive kayaking. Yeah. Uh, you know, and there's this, there's a range. So here's one of the more, I guess I would say, philosophical differences that you'll find in adaptive kayaking. On the one hand, um, there are programs and individuals and, and, you know, experts who will say, I will not take someone adaptive kayaking who cannot self-rescue. Hmm. So if you capsize, you need to be able to get yourself back in the kayak. Well, as you can imagine, if you're paralyzed, that's probably not going to happen. So um, so then, so then it, it, you know, it's a spectrum now. You can have someone there with you. So that's the next tier down. You, you can't self-rescue, uh, but I am an expert in kayaking and I'm a trainer and I can help rescue you and I'm nearby and we're in a, yeah. you know, we're in a calm body of water and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then there's all the way down to the other end where the individual says, you know what? I'm not in a program. If, if, if I want to go out kayaking and I know I'm, I'm in some degree of danger as any kayaker is, you know what? I, I, it's my right to decide I'm going to do that. And I'm, I'm accepting the risk. And so um, when it comes to access, there's that whole continuum to be aware of. And um, so I'm not really answering your question directly, but others than to say there's just some sort of special um, considerations. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, so we're, we're getting towards the end of our interview. Okay. Uh, what, what final words would you like to leave uh, with our listening audience? Hmm. Um, uh, good question. Um, I think if, if um, you know, you're, you're someone who uh, hadn't considered kayaking um, because of some limitation, physical or cognitive, um, uh, mobility, uh, that it, it, it is a very uh, liberating activity. And there are a lot of adaptive programs around the country, and you could try it out with a program. Now, I guess one of the things I didn't mention is there's also different types of adaptive kayaking programs. Mm -hmm. There are some where you're in a tandem kayak and you're really, you're kind of riding along and that's nice. And it's an, it's an enjoyable activity and it's something different. Um, I think the goal, ideally, if possible, and it's not always possible, is to give someone the ability to paddle independently. Um, so anyway, that, that, that's another side issue. Um, but so the, the programs that I work most with fall in the latter camp. And I, and I think our, um, our paddle has made that possible, frankly. Um, but anyway, to, so, so to those you know, listening, I, I think it's, it's check it out, um, be safe. Um, you, you know, go to a program and try out some equipment um, and, you know, see if it's for you. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to invest in all of that equipment yourself, um, but a lot of people have. They've done the program, a program, and then they're like, you know what, this is such a game changer for me. This is such bringing such awesomeness to my life that I'm going to find a way to, to make it all happen and I can buy my own. So I guess those would be my parting okay. words. Well, thank you, you know, to you, your dad, your family, uh, to help make things possible for people like Raymond. Thanks, Meg. You're welcome. Bye-bye.